So we are in session 30 today and we'll continue with HR project development. In this session we will look into using the master page, the content placeholder and the content inside a master page and we'll see a cascade style sheet, what are they and how can we use it and uh, ASPX web form design split and source view in Visual Studio and the SQL Server 2008 management studio overview and we're creating application database in 2010 uh, creating database tables and constraints within Visual Studio without going into the management studio and using grid view control in ASPX web forms to create your form to show the data and also modify the data and we'll see a form view control for editing the uh, given data elements within the form. So pretty much we will do a very sweet flavor of a shortcut way of uh, accomplishing your HR project in this session um, and uh, we'll get into further details down the line. Okay, so let's kick off session 30 today. Okay, cool. So we will be uh, doing um, uh, database part today. And uh, yes, to do some database part, what we need to do is from uh, the admin master, so we are inside a content, so we will, uh, so what we can do is simply go to the, the main site master and uh, pick the content placeholder. If you go to the designer, this is the content main content and I can as well come here and uh, pick this content placeholder and uh, go to my, so apparently this isn't uh, added by default when I added the uh, the master page. So I'm going to go here, here and add that uh, content placeholder here. So that soon after the menu item I have, I get to see this content placeholder and for me I'm going to just name this uh, specific to admin admin main content that's fine and similarly I want to add the same thing for my general as well go to the general and yeah. as you see every time when I try to change I get the prompt to uh, check out that's because of the option that we choose to um, explicitly prompt in source control Okay, so for just for a recap on that again, um, yeah, where we do with tools and options, we did change the settings uh, for the plugin, for TFS plugin and in under environments to prompt for checkout. That's when uh, it's actually prompting every time when I'm trying to uh, edit a file. Okay, cool. So this is done. So what uh, we have done here is we added a content placeholder so in the parent form. So this will add a room for the children, uh, like the employee, uh, which is inheriting from it, to uh, add add the content here. So general main here. So I can uh, since here I have added this form before. So we what we need to do is we just need to add. ASP content and um, say ID something um, my employee employee content some ID and another thing is content placeholder we need to actually pick the parent content placeholder so that this content is part of the uh, the parent content placeholder Okay, so that, that's the ideal behavior of uh, a master page. So when a master page content you're adding up, um, we need to, so what you need to do is you're going to uh, put your stuff here. Okay. So as a child, um, this employee page, uh, since it is using a master page called general master, um, it, uh, it can add its content only within the content play, uh, content here uh, otherwise you cannot add a content directly so that's how because all of the rest of the places uh, if you see the again the uh, the mouse mouse pointer it changed to uh, like a not allowed area so this is because of uh, the uh, region uh, under the uh, 
master page. So all this content will be common for all the pages that you see in the application. So that's the advantage of a master page so that you don't have to repeatedly uh, put the headers and the menus for all the items in the page. Okay, so we'll uh, do some of the um, basic uh, formattings here and then we'll jump into doing the database part of it. Okay, and in this case, uh, yes, uh, this is the place where I can actually add my stuff and design it. This is the design section where I can put my stuff. So similarly, I need to have the same same content for the other form also. Okay, I'm just going to do a copy paste and uh, in this case what I'm going to do is uh, um, say simply welcome. Okay. Okay, so to make it a really rich feel, look and feel again, so uh, I need to again add something uh, here so that it says that I am under general home. So how do I do that? I just go back to the general um, main page and uh, try to add a header similar to what I have here. Um, okay, so, so simply again, since I already have it uh, in the site main, to save our time, I'm going to go and uh, copy this part. Okay, so this part. And another important thing that I wanted to again show you is the class. If you see, this is a class that we are attaching to each and, each and every dev tag there and also to a couple of other uh, elements. So almost all the uh, elements you can actually attach to this class. This class is coming from where? So this class is actually coming from the style sheet. Uh, if you see this ESS, this is called a cascade style sheet and hope you, if you are a web developer uh, experience then you know pretty much what is this style sheet stands for. So this style sheet can have the uh, all the look and feel uh, as a configuration so that uh, you can reuse the same um, uh, settings for the given um, page elements so that uh, throughout the application you can maintain the same uh, setting consistently. So that's part of the aesthetics that you're going to maintain as part of the web applications and it's very, very important to know that uh, you need to uh, be aware of the style sheet. Um, so in this case, so we'll just have a quick jump into the style sheet and see what it looks like. So if we uh, look at this uh, home, the way the text is appearing here, um, so that's again part of the uh, style sheet. And the style sheet, uh, if I go to style um, site master here, so site uh, here, the page def page is what used here. And that page definition you will see under site. If you want to change the look and feel, then you have to get it to the uh, site.css and how will you how will you know that this is the file that's been used uh, yeah that's another important thing uh, because uh, each and every file ASPX file can use its own style sheet and in this case uh, the since the master is uh, referring to the uh, link href uh, style sheet file here it's applied throughout the children in the inheritance hierarchy. So every file in this case uh, employee again need not refer to that uh, style sheet explicitly. But of course you, you can still add another uh, style sheet here. You can still do the references uh, uh, for a given page. Um, so at the page level it's been added up here uh, but programmatically you can actually change that uh, also. Um, yeah, so you need to track it based on the file that's been referred to. In some cases, you can actually have multiple CSS files as well. As well. So if you want to change the behavior or the look and feel of the uh, page in this case, then you have to go to the respective tag, in this case page. I will go to the page and look, for, look up for the page. And the page should be here, yeah. So this is the page uh, definition of the class and it's pretty much follows the C-sharp like syntax but it's not a C-sharp code, uh, it's just a style sheet code, it's called a, a CSS uh, style sheet uh, notations. And this is not specific to again uh, a .NET, again this is a CSS is a, is a web standards 
and uh, this is common to any web applications. It, it could be JSP or uh, even ASP or ASPX, it doesn't matter. So all this is industry uh, web standards. Okay, so in this case, if I want to really change something here, then I can change it. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my sub uh, page title because I don't want to have such a big uh, title in the sub also, so, uh, I mean a child page. I'll say um, uh, child child page in which where I'm going to reduce this uh, width to say some extent like 700 or 800 okay 800 and I will leave the rest of the things like uh, margin and other things leave as it is only the width I'm going to change so that uh, I can uh, use that same style sheet in my uh, sub master pages okay and what I'm going to do is I'll simply make a copy paste of the same thing um, wherein okay this whole part where I have a, a page definition and go to the master page here and view the source of course I can have a split view also uh, the split view here if you uh, note if you see the design view is the one that will show you the page in the designer view and the source view and split view like uh, split view will actually show you both um, sometimes um, I have seen considerably uh, the performance wise when you play with the designer uh, 2010 is far far uh, faster than 20, uh, 2008 and I don't, as you see I don't see any performance uh, uh, issues otherwise 2008 uh, switching between these tabs is one of the, is one of the major problem uh, luckily 2010 is uh, resolved that kind of issues um, so right now we're going to add up the uh, title um, so where we want to add just above the menu items okay so let me even put it in the head content and see if it is feasible and I don't want uh, all these uh, things because it has uh, many other items like the login display and the um, these hyperlinks I don't want these I want to take these away and also of course I want this header uh, to be there and I want to re rename this to general home okay so rest all things remain same of course I want to change the uh, style sheet here which is going to be um, page sorry if I have a doubt I can uh, make use of the intelligence here and say child page so the intelligence is uh, pretty good enough uh, works good and uh, main content I don't need even this content placeholder here and even this okay I saved it there is an error so let's see if uh, that appears here um, in the here uh, um, in the view I don't see that's coming because it it doesn't allow you to put the in under the head so that's the reason we need to actually shift this under the content here and um, it's good to go uh, but still it's not that intuitive because it's uh, it looks so big uh, I don't want to have such a big text here so for that again I'll go to the style sheet and modify the uh, rest of the things uh, like uh, uh, the margin I want to ch change it to say 15 and uh, the border I can leave it as is this is all, this is all like the uh, you know um, designing aspects it can go uh, to any extent um, it all depends upon um, uh, your design and your skills in uh, designing a web page um, uh, the sky is the limit so you can see uh, awesome sites out there uh, of course uh, you can do a lot of uh, very good color combinations and other things but right now we are not concentrating on that part so we're going to go ahead so that's the style sheets overview. Um, although again, uh, there's a lot bit of uh, elaborate information available outside. So we definitely, it's one of the area where you need to be familiar with and uh, uh, change the uh, contents. There, there are a ton of things uh, with respect to if you go with the grids and other things. Uh, there are a lot of information about, uh, information that you need to know about the style sheets. Okay. Of course, you can also apply the style sheets directly uh, in the code here. 
just like a styles but uh, you know the if uh, once you hard code your style sheet within, within the page uh, the look and feel of your consistency of the look and feel of the page might get uh, or might get go away so to to make sure that um, the look and feel of the application can remains consistent throughout the application, uh, we need to maintain a CSS so that if you want to change any particular color or any particular style, uh, you change only at one place. Okay, so uh, so that it applies to throughout your website. So that's the kind of overview I wanted to give you on the style sheet. We are good with that. Now we're not going to go back to the style sheet again. Now what else we want to do so just run a okay yeah the one of the one of the more um, basic thing we have um, not done so far is uh, this one so what I'm going to do is uh, I need to add the other items also like the admin admin and the navigation URL so we have the admin pay, um, admin home okay and say okay I need one more which is uh, general and I'm going to say navigation URL general okay I'm oh, sorry general home so that's the added item that I wanted to finish so that our link navigation works good. So today we'll see uh, one flavor of uh, a database handling. We're going to make use of uh, a database here. So within this app data, so I, I, although I can actually make use of the real-time SQL Server engine to connect to the database, um, for the sake of our uh, project, so that you know, once I upload this source code uh, out there for you, you can actually download it and use it straightforward. So it's going to be more easy uh, for you to download and uh, really walk through the code and run it in your local and uh, test it yourself. Um, so if I put it into the SQL Server database, it's going to be more painful uh, because you have to run those scripts in the SQL Server database and for that you need to have a SQL Server and so on. So uh, to keep it simple, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to add a database file here. As we uh, saw, so this is the primary database that's uh, been added up uh, to the application by default uh, and which contains all the authentication information and uh, keep in mind that uh, as I told you whichever is not included as part of the project uh, that you can see, see all uh, by clicking this icon don't try to add them to the project uh, they are excluded from the project for a reason um, because why this uh, MDF uh, uh, file got excluded because it needs to if once you include into the uh, solution because this is uh, bound to the TFS it becomes a read-only file unless until you check it out so you don't want to keep the the database file read-only because whenever you are running this application and doing the login part uh, the system uh, will actually try to use the database for retrieval and also for modifications and today what I'm going to do is we're going to first create a database in the SQL Server database for that I don't really have to go and run um, the SQL Server uh, console which is a management uh, studio uh, the simplest way to do the database part okay that's the intro I want to give you and again uh, similarly since we are making a very comfortable way to add a database like this but this is not how uh, things will be in real time mode so for small scale applications this is completely fine so I'm going to add a new database here so just to walk through uh, go to the app data and uh, add new item and I'll see a couple of files like uh, XML text file so on so these are these are this can be uh, some of the data types and I am pretty much interested with the SQL Server database okay so I did open the visuals uh, uh, management studio so this is completely uh, different way because this is I'm creating on the server on a different uh, this could be on a different box so we're not doing this for the reason that once you get this project out to you 
uh, you don't want to set up all these uh, in your local machine. This is going to be a very painstaking um, uh, job to set up your SQL Server database and then install it. So to keep it simple, I'm adding a console database file here. And in this case, I'm going to name this as HRDB. Okay, and then add. Of course, this is going to be added as part of the project, so it's asking to check out. Okay, and I'm going to check it out. Good. Now this uh, uh, this database is added as part of the project. Okay, good. So now we're going to manage this uh, uh, inside our IDE. Of course, you can actually manage your SQL Server server also inside IDE. For that, you actually I'll close this part and I'll say View and Server Explorer. You can get to the server, and if you see th this server explorer, will actually show you all the servers. Which, these are the physical servers. This is my machine, which is local machine, and also we can actually connect to any other servers in the uh, network. Okay, using the add server. If you know the, I'll see if it, if there is any. Of course, I need to know the company uh, computer computer name or IP address to add it up. So I'm not going there, which is uh, not going to be useful today, and. So from here, we're going to create the database tables for us. Uh, we need two tables, uh, one for employee and one for department, right? Okay, so I'm just going to create some of the uh, attributes uh, in employee. So employee ID is the one, first thing, and uh, the data type for employee ID. And of course, the one other important thing in the, if you know the database part, uh, most of you know, uh, for SQL Server, there is something called uh, identity column. So I'm going to make this identity column to make sure that the ID number is auto-generated by itself so that you don't have to really track um, uh, the incremental part of it. So identity column, I'm going to make it increment. It has two parts. Uh, one is the uh, identity uh, increment and seed. Seed is a value that you're going to specify to start with and increment is a value that you're going to provide uh, what is the number that you want to increment for the next value. Okay, so since I want to have uh, start my employee IDs with at least 100, I'm just giving a seed as 100 and of course uh, it's going to be incremented by 1. Okay, and of course allow nulls, I don't want to allow nulls. And of course, I want to make this as a primary key. Uh, I will do another way, although I can do it here. I will do. I will show you another way how we can make it a primary key. Okay. And if you, I'm not going to really show you any queries, FYI, because a SQL Server. If you really want to do the whole thing, you can do with queries. For this, there's a uh, DDL statements that you need to be aware of, like create uh, commands or alter commands. So none of the commands will really work out today because uh, our focus is not a database. And of course, you don't have to really do it also. And the second one is first name. Okay, and just keep on doing it. Varkar, Vachar, last name. This is Vachar. So in this case, you don't have to really remember anything. So if you even um, uh, wanted to pick for the available data, data types, you can always pick it from here, right? So it's pretty easy. And uh, yes, uh, we'll take this X as well, wherein I would need a char of 1, of course, and allow nulls, that's fine. And of course, first name, I don't want to allow nulls. So a couple of business rules you can actually enforce at the database level itself, uh, uh, which is what I'm doing here. Uh, First name is a required field, uh, of course, and on the database side, I'm maintaining that you don't allow the null. So th that means if you try to insert any null, uh, then it's going to break at the database level itself. So you can maintain the database integrity by applying the constraints in the database itself. And uh, of course, database itself is a completely a separate concept. If I really take a database sessions, then it will be at least 20 sessions uh, around. Okay, I love to do that, but sometime down the line. And um, okay, so the sex and what else you want? Uh, age, 
age is going to be, say, um, no one will be living beyond 100 years. So the smallest I can uh, see is a tiny int uh, in C++ database. T i n y, yeah, there is one tiny int. Uh, otherwise, this is equivalent to byte. If you remember, byte it will be zero to two fifty five uh, uh, numbers. That's so to max it allows is a two fifty five number. So two fifty five is good enough. I don't want to keep it as an int. Int is actually a four byte value, uh, which is a very huge value. Okay, so we don't want to have, have an int there. And yeah, choosing a data type is a very very important thing because the the data type that you're going to choose. Uh, will uh, relatively have impact on the, the record size as well. So this is very important for a large volume applications, but for us it's really uh, not a matter of fact. And address, address line one, this is going to be HR 50 fine. Address line two, HR 50 and we need more. Okay, city, city, C I T Y, and that are 50 is fine. And what else? State. I can actually take a char of uh, two. So it's, I will limit to only two character state. Okay, and finally we have a zip. Okay, ideally speaking, you have a zip as uh, normally have five to four digits. Uh, okay, I can put the first zip five digit, uh, which is going to be VATR uh, five. Why it is VATR? Because uh, if you keep it as a number, a couple of zip codes might start with zero, so it will truncate that zero. So to keep it simple, so that I uh, make it as a car VATR, but validation wise, we can do that validation at the application side. And five plus four is a valid valid zip code, if most of you know. Um, but ideally, we normally supply only the five-digit zip code. Ideally, but uh, for USPS um, validations, they usually get the five plus four zip code. Four will be related to the area nearby you, the primary zip code. Okay. So once I start saving it, it's asking for a name, and this information belongs to when. Employee, so I have a employee table ready. So I'm going to create a department now with ID uh, to int. Similarly, I want to have an um, identifier, identity column. Okay, so make it S, and uh, this one I want to seed with ten. Okay, worker at this point. Okay. And I'm going to, um, I think for hmm, for this, I'm going to have a HOD. A HOD is a um, ID of an employee itself, okay, which is going to be in because this will be actually going to be a referential integrity to the other column, right? So we will do that. So we will keep it simple uh, for department. Let's just have a department ID name and uh, what else? Description, if you want to put, that's fine. Description and uh, where car, what are, uh, I'll say 200, okay, that's 200, so 200, yeah. Okay, so that's all I'm interested in, and this is department. Good. So the, both the tables are created, and uh, now comes the more constraints on top of these tables. Number one constraint, uh, since the HOD, uh, HOD is actually an uh, ID, employee ID, which is uh, referred inside the employee table. So I need to have a uh, referential integrity so that to maintain that, uh, to ensure the department the HOD column contains only the IDs that are present in the employee table. Ideally, it makes sense, right? So if your department has a HOD, he himself uh, will be the employee of the firm. So you cannot have any other ID who is not an employee of the firm. So that's the referential integrity that you need to maintain in the database. Uh, to do that, um, there's another luxury way to do it. Um, okay, no problem. We're going to create a new diagram here and pick those two and say add and close this window. And you'll see the uh, 
your tables uh, in a graphical view. So once you do this, actually, you can this can actually be extracted to your documentation also. This is going to be useful. And in this case, uh, I want to first make my IDs by primary keys. Um, if you know what is a primary key, that's fine. For those who don't know what is a primary key, uh, primary key stands for a unique and not null. Um, in SQL Server, when you make any uh, key, uh, the primary key, it's going to actually become a uh, clustered uh, index on top of the primary keys. Uh, the cluster index, again, I don't want to get into too many details of the indexing and other things with the database perspective, so let's keep it uh, this session too simple to ASP.NET. Uh, and uh, what else we need? H4D. H4D, I need to make uh, a referential integrity to this uh, employee ID. How do I do that? I uh, just have to right click on this and go to yeah, relationships and say add a relationship and within this uh, there is something called the tables and columns spec. Hit on this uh, button and this is the department uh, uh, table that we have chosen and this is the primary key table which is uh, employee and employees uh, column is ID. So employee ID should be of the foreign key table is a department and inside department HOD. So that means this indicates that the value that comes into the HOD column uh, should be the value that is inside an employee ID column. Okay. So now it's enforced and also I want to give a, of course, this name. When an exception happens, so this is the name that you're going to see. So always uh, keep this so meaningful so that when you see an FK, that means a foreign key between a department table and employee table, um, on which column it's actually uh, done. So employee ID and department HOD. So this is itself a meaningful uh, name so that I can identify. Okay, so I'm done with this and uh, close this and I see this uh, referential integrities added up to this table and I'm finally going to hit the save button and diagram, okay, I will say uh, HRDB, oh, sorry, HRDB and say okay and of course the changes whatever we did, they're going to apply to these tables, that's the warning it's giving, I'll say yes apply. Okay, so our HR database is ready for now. How easy it is. It's pretty easy. I did not open any SQL editor to write a SQL commands like create table, table name, column, this and that, all that stuff. So first I had to create employee record and then I can create department table. Okay, okay I'll put uh, my name for clarity sake. That's only yeah, one of the name that I know very well, so I always use that name. And address, I will say 1108YVRDON, drive and address line 2, nothing, capital, this is one of the well-known address I have, and 17011, and uh, I think 1284, if I'm not wrong. So that's one of the record I created and the ID is created by 100. This is because of the seed that we have created. So ID, I didn't uh, add, so it adds by itself. So that's one thing you don't have, you, you need to ensure that when you're doing the, um, the program side also, you don't pass the ID column value. Otherwise, if you try to pass ID column value, your uh, database will fail. Um, because the ID, is, ID column is an identity column, it's going to add the column by internally. Now I'll add the department information and yep so I have the HR department H4D uh, I will say H4D is 100 and description I'll say human at the max length. Okay invalid value for cell I have to close this looks like I put a wrong data type for uh, for this column, clear results. Okay, let's let me go and open the table definition. 
Yep, that's the problem. I just gave a var binary by mistake. It's supposed to be var char. Uh, but I, I don't think this will let me do this because uh, I might have to drop this and create again. Uh, yes, we have to actually recreate the table. That's a problem. Um, okay, so no problem. We will do that. No, don't save anything. That's the typo error. I'm going to delete this department table and going to create a new department table. So that's the problem when you do with the ID. If you do with the scripts, then you can actually, uh, of course, in the scripts, scripts also, you can alter the table columns. That's doable, but sometimes you have to, uh, when you add a differential integrities and other things, if you have the data within the tables, then uh, more, uh, not all cases will be successful. So in those cases, probably you might have to recreate it again. And in this case, we are doing that exactly. Uh, and what else? Description. Description, um, yes, what char 20 and uh, HOD, sorry, HOD means head of the department, which is I int, okay, and LO nulls, which is fine. And I'm gonna create this uh, table, say department, okay, to keep our life going ahead. Uh, yeah, we are in HRDB, of course. I wonder where it is actually uh, throwing that error from. So these things are quite common uh, when you start uh, doing something. Okay, okay, this is also will be gone for a toss now. Okay, good. And delete this, yes, okay, there you go. We got messed up with this and don't save it. I'm going to delete this as well and uh, create a new diagram. Yeah, I think now, probably I won't be let, uh, allowed to even change the name. That's fine. We can live with this name. Uh, we're going to change this to set primary key. So this is the reason. If you see why, uh, why an enterprise applications won't do this way, this is because of this. So if, uh, every time if you want to change some values, it's not going to be that intuitive using the GUI. So since our application is very small, we don't, uh, we are fine with this. Okay, and uh, HOD. So what that means is you should be very well aware of the SQL scripts as well. So it's not an option. Uh, department HOD, uh, referential integrity, we're going to add. So you're redoing this step again to uh, choose the employee table with the ID column and the department HOD. Oh, HOD is supposed to be. Wow, again a mistake. Okay, that's fine. Um, okay, we're going to live with a couple of mistakes there. Good. And okay, I'm going to give, leave this name as is. And we are good. And this is going to be uh, HRDB. Okay. Okay, apply that there. Good, so we are good with the data and now we're going to add some department information by right clicking and say show table data and the name I will say again say HR human resource and HOD is 100. We have only one element. Now this time it's good. And uh, yes, so we have uh, created one HR record here, another one for employee. So we will stop there. So this indicates we are successfully able to create the two dat uh, database tables. And then uh, we are going to get into the forms. So our motive is to do all this stuff from the web page. Okay, right. So we're going to do exactly that. So we're going to save this part and uh, good. Now we'll jump into the form. Okay, good. So now we will be getting into the employee page. Okay, put your stuff here. We're going to put our stuff here now. So we're going to remove this stuff, save this, and we'll go to the powerful toolbox and start using the data. 
Okay, so we want to see the whole data first. So for that, I will going to use the grid view, control, drag and drop it exactly here. So I have the grid view control. I go to the auto format and choose the um, the best fit uh, uh, style that I think classic looks blue because all my uh, backgrounds are blue so this I think this fits my requirement fine blue and of course you can change all of that manually from the code uh, we are just making the use of the data sources here and choose the data source I'm going to create a new data source here so what it's doing is uh, it's a database uh, SQL database I'm going to choose and the name for this is going to be um, HRDB okay okay SQL as we are source for HRDB okay and we want to pick the database HRDB of course also you can see the connection string uh, if you would like to but we don't do it now next and this is the connection string name I'll say HRDB connection string name and next so it's trying to pick what are the feeds we want to pick from the data source since we are doing an employee screen here I am interested in employee screen and since this is already checked for star that means all the columns included and otherwise I can also choose which columns I want to get in okay so this uh, is fine and of course I can add an order by clause, a sorting clause here which I'm not interested right now and also I can add a where clause to filter for specific data which again I'm not interested at this point and say go to advanced and I'll say this is the feature wherein I can generate the insert, update and delete statements. Okay so I'm not doing any query I'm just checking the box and of course this uh, checkbox will actually uh, do your consistency or concurrency uh, enabled with the query so that the multiple users if they are trying to uh, mod modify the same record it's going to warn it's not let, it's not going to let you do it uh, so that uh, uh, the data integrity is maintained okay good so nam uh, that's all next and test the query so it's actually running the query on the table which is a select asterisk this is the query how it looks like if you really know the database so this is how the select asterisk from table and again it's very important so this is our scope for our training session and this is the data that we already have created and I'm going to finish it notice that whatever changes I have done so far is actually going to apply to the web.config so that's the uh, so since this is already uh, locked it's asking for checkout I'll say checkout and it's going to start adding those entries into the config file so now this is the time let's see what are the entries that it actually added up to the config file okay if you just look take a look at the connection string so it actually added the connection string that I have just created and of course it is using the SQL data SQL client and add a, uh, the provider name and the database of course it's using the HRDB MDF which I have created and the earlier one is actually making use of a different database this is uh, the first entry is actually used for uh, authentication and this is our application data good so as I said uh, so all this whatever the wizard helped you to do it you can actually do it by yourself uh, of course uh, for that it takes a lot of knowledge to go and modify uh, or, or add up all these items uh, by yourself and of course uh, ID is so luxury that you don't really have to worry about that anytime and again I'll look up the properties of the grid and if you take a look at these uh, additional proper uh, check boxes available the pagination sorting editing so what is the pagination uh, when you you might have seen even in the Google search when you search for something on the uh, on the uh, search engine you will see a lot of results and the bottom of the page you'll see page numbers right so that's called the pagination so what it allows uh, is uh, if you if your result set is uh, uh, going to return about hundreds of thousands of rows of data you cannot keep uh, show them in one screen 
So to keep it uh, minimal, uh, why you can't show, you can also show it. There's not, there's technically it's not a restriction, uh, but it's going to slow down your uh, application drastically because uh, the whole set of, uh, we say, 100,000 records coming up to the browser, uh, imagine it, what kind of uh, a processing load that you're going to add up to the page and the web browser is going to die. And also, even if you succeed showing it, uh, what value it's adding to the user, none. So nobody would like to see 100,000 rows, right? So that's why the pagination is a very, very important. Um, and in uh, with this grid, you don't have to write a single line of code. You just have to check this box. And of course, sorting, you don't have to write a single line of code. Just select this. And for editing, I don't want to do editing in this grid, although this is allowed. And I will do a deletion here. Okay, and also uh, we will come back to the selection part later. Okay, so in this case, I I didn't allow, uh, I didn't ask for editing, although I can do it. So that's a grid view has the capabilities of everything uh, in one place. Okay, so we are good with this part. But what I'm interested in doing is instead of uh, editing in the grid itself, I want to have a separate uh, pan here where I, wherein I can edit the values so that uh, I can do the validation from those uh, fields also. Okay, at this point we will run this code and uh, see. Sounds pretty vanilla, right? It's okay, so we see something got messed up here and uh, we will see why. Uh, what got messed up because our style sheets are gone um, for some reason. Now they are back again for some reason. Okay, something is happening there. We'll see how to fix it. Uh, so this is the output of the grid that we have. And I go to home and again manage employee, employee screen. I am able, I'm able to see all these things. So I don't see any of other other things like the pagination because uh, the pagination com uh, comes automatically once uh, it exceeds the minimum uh, rows per page. Since I have only one record, it doesn't really make sense. So my grid is good, but you know, um, all these columns or headings are pretty much from the database column. So you want to have some nice look and feel. All that you can actually change. So before that, uh, let me uh, try to fix uh, the the login page. If I log out, so the login page is completely gone because it lost the style sheet. It, it did not lost the style sheet. Uh, what happened probably is. Uh, uh, it uh, the permissions on that page because that's my guesswork. We'll try to fix it for a couple of uh, uh, minutes and then come back. Okay, and uh, looks like uh, the style sheet folder here uh, because we denied the access to all the anonymous users before you log in to the page. Uh, it doesn't have any. Uh, access to any of the folders within it. That's the reason uh, the style sheet acts, access to the styles also gone. So to allow this uh, uh, to skip this part, um, this part of uh, like access to the style sheets, uh, we need to do a location-based um, authorization. That you can actually do it um, uh, by a location attribute. Let me try to do that. Okay, location and path, I will, okay, I'll say path is equal to, I'll say styles. This applies from the root, so that's why when I say styles, then uh, it picks the root path. And within the root, uh, we should have uh, uh, same thing, like a system dot, system dot web. And uh, then comes the authorization authorization yep within this I'll say hello users all so what this let me see if it really works yeah if this doesn't work then I won't I'm not going to spend any time okay good so it works so I decided not to spend too much of time on that, but yeah, luckily uh, it worked for me. Uh, the reason is the I allowed access to everyone for this uh, styles uh, path. 
so this will uh, this actually eventually fixed my problem so good so we will be jump back to not admin general employee page excellent so we want to create new um, rows also and of course uh, also we said that we're going to change some of the uh, titles if I go back to the uh, view pan here then I can uh, see the grid view layout here and uh, also uh, if I want to change the uh, if you see the these are the commands that's already created for you all these SQL statements otherwise you would have to write by yourself for deleting this is how the query looks like uh, delete where and insert and select and update so all these are created for you uh, to use them out of box uh, and uh, you have these uh, 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 definitions like the the insert parameters created for you uh, which will be used uh, for uh, inserting and updating operations by itself so you don't have to really uh, write anything for updation these are the things it's already created if you want to manually modify any of these then you can do it and these are part of the your uh, uh, data source SQL data source okay and also if you want to change the look and feel of the columns that uh, you you're uh, seeing there you can also change these values also but we're not going to go that level uh, if to do that you have to actually go and say uh, edit the templates these are the templates available here then you can actually edit the respective uh, template uh, and uh, get whatever you, you want from there and in this case I'm not going that level uh, to keep our uh, session very simple okay and uh, yes, as I said, I'm just scratching the surface of ASP.NET. We're not doing a really a robust application uh, in this training process. Okay, so to make, um, uh, to edit the line items, right, I, although I can do it inside the grid, but again, one limitation in this uh, grid view is that you cannot actually create new elements. As you see, the options available here is enable editing, but there's no option for you to create new elements, uh, new uh, items here. Uh, to actually do uh, creating a new element, uh, we have to make use of the other controls available. Okay, I'll just go get rid of this. And we're going to make use of another control under data pan, uh, under the data group. Uh, that is uh, if forms view. Again, I pick the classic one here and also the data source. Okay. Okay, and uh, enable paging and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Okay, so it's came with these edit and delete and new options here. And I will run this code. So again. Okay, cool. So I see uh, this is an item template here. And if I say new, of course, it's very ugly. Um, Okay, no problem. We can actually change all that uh, by modifying it. But for now, I'm going to keep it as is and uh, put in Gopi some name. Okay, uh, mail a say 28 address say something Harrison Avenue just to make a uh, City state is a ng and zip is a 07304 and say insert i it's hardly visible but yep so soon after i add the item it's uh, available in the it's shown on the grid again so i'm not writing a single line of code for this again i'm creating another one to key to uh, actually create some good amount of data what i will take is john PK and uh, yeah again uh, you know, 25 addresses uh, some street some city 
state is uh, SM. We don't have any validations, which is fine. So it can take anything I put in. <clears throat> there you go. So there's a validation that has failed. Uh, looks like I have given a long value for some of the field. So it, it failed because this is the one. Because the zip has only five digits and I give six digits, probably that's the reason. And yes, so if you see that ugly screen that we see uh, for exceptions, um, yeah, so that's one other critical thing that we need to address. And uh, that we will be addressing using the enterprise uh, application blocks uh, for exception handling. Um, and for now, we can still do it in a short way. So in this case, I would just want to demonstrate the sorting abilities of the grid. Uh, which is available directly uh, out of box. You don't have to write a single line of code for this. Um, so otherwise, uh, uh, writing a, lo a logic to sort on this grid is one of the main painstaking job uh, earlier. So in with uh, the ASP.NET, it's readily available and it's out of box. You can actually make use of it. Another interesting thing I wanted to do here is a simple one. Uh, that uh, the the content shown in the item here is different from uh, what I'm picking up here. If I want to pick a particular row in this grid, I'm, I want to see that element here so that I can edit that element directly using the edit item. In this case, if I do edit, it's actually letting me to edit the respective item here. But I don't want to do that. I want to edit based on the selection that I do on the top. How can I do that? We just have to write uh, small code of course what I need to do is um, the yes we need to first enable the selection uh, of this Let's enable selection okay and then we need to write a code we need to write a code double click on this selection when the selection uh, selected index changed what I need to do is I need to uh, assign this dot form view dot uh, uh, set page index to this dot uh, grid view one dot uh, selected um, selected index let me try this okay let's check this if this works good okay so I just added try to set the page index uh, to the uh, selected index so let's see if this uh, really works again login okay there now I have a selection item here yeah it works so I picked 101 here and I see the 10 uh, respective item here and in this case I can actually select this item and again go directly and say hit uh, edit and I can edit this item say for example uh, say Tom okay and say update so Tom appeared here so it's instantly updating stuff and also if you uh, notice carefully um, I'll, I'll just uh, assign this directly and I said edit here if you see the ID ID column is not letting you to edit because it knows that uh, this is uh, this is a uh, sorry I should be doing it this way so oops yeah the ID is um, an identity column in the database so it automatically recognize that and let you uh, let not you edit that so this is how we can actually simply do the page and similarly we will uh, try to finish off the others page also which is uh, our department page I don't have a department page yet I'm going to add a new page on a C shop a web I'll say form and say department page and of course I will pick the general master okay good so this time I have the content um, automatically created uh, which is good and I'll go to the designer um, so it 
has all these flavors uh, added up by default. I don't have to do anything additional there. And I will do the same thing. We will pick the grid view control here. And now this time I'm going to choose uh, a new data source with the database and uh, HP DB, HRDB connection string and this time department and advanced do this check this okay and do the next and test the query it should have one record yes and then finish it off that's a couple of steps and similarly I'm going to do enable the sorting editing I can now this time I'll do editing I want I don't want to go back and uh, of course, yeah, I still have to do that uh, editing anyway. And I will delete, deleting and selection all these I have picked. And in addition to this, of course, uh, the format classic, yes, good. And uh, take this menu out. And at the bottom, I want to even add the form view. Okay, and I pick uh, the, the SQL Server data source, uh, SQL and connection same, and department, and finish it off. Okay, and uh, enable paging. I'm going to do this here, and of course the format I pick the classic, and it comes with the edit, delete, and new commands which is good okay fine so we are done with this coding uh, and this page is ready to use and I'm going to save this and uh, of course since this is a new page I need to add a link in my uh, page here I'll go shift to the designer view and uh, select this edit menu items add department and the URL for this will be department.aspx okay and okay so this is done that's all I need and I'm um, hit run So I'm going to go to get into general and say department. <coughs> so I see the first row uh, available here and I'll say new and the name for that will be say IT in for technologies and head of the department I'll pick 20 and I say insert. Oh there you go. So we see a foreign key error FK department employee so it failed with an exception again so if you see this dirty screen uh, this is the screen is an exception screen that comes in by default and definitely you don't want users to see this page anytime right so we need to actually show such kind of errors uh, in a friendly fashion to the end users okay so we'll do that uh, again uh, in the next uh, follow-up session okay it's anyway failing for several reasons so probably our differential integrity has some problem uh, sorry because our HOD uh, is not available uh, our HOD value current values are 100, uh, 100 plus right so 101 that's my bad and uh, how do I know uh, to give a valid values again so exceptions like those uh, we enforced in the database side so that's where the exception are raising and although at this point of time we haven't we haven't uh, actually do any validations from the form side okay so we need to do the validations on the form as well and if you see because the two times the uh, insertion failed if you see the ID it skipped two values so that's the problem with the identity column and uh, it will lose the uh, continuity of the IDs 
Okay, cool. So I think uh, we are good for uh, these uh, two forms for now. And uh, again, of course, the last thing I would like to do is uh, based on the selection. Okay, I will do the same line of code. Uh, this dot form view dot selected mm -hmm, selected page index set page index sorry is equal to this dot grid view dot uh, selected index. So that's the one line of code uh, will help in um, associating the respective uh, selected item to the grid. Okay, so 13, yeah, it works. And straight away edit, IT say information technology update, it appears. Good. So we are good, we are successfully done with these screens, but what is missing? Have you noticed that uh, we have completely uh, discarded our design? We did actually, right? So if I go back and yeah, so we did a long and exhaustive design and finally we see that we are not actually using any of that, right? Especially the code that we have from the classes and all these uh, packages, none of these have been used. So that's a big mistake, right? So we did see one very shortcut, uh, sweet vanilla flavor of the uh, Visual Studio, but we actually did not actually adhere to the uh, design at all. So what we need to do is actually we need to make use of our design. So that, that's when we are actually going to do a real good application uh, with a lot of uh, flexibility. What is the problem if you might ask, if you uh, go to an environment where you get into a job and someone asks you to do a form, you do this way. You dra directly drag a control set these properties and done. You're, you're done actually. Uh, and it works good and you can also extend this uh, functionality and apply the, uh, as I said, you can actually go and uh, edit the templates and create uh, validation rules on top of it and you can do, uh, you can extend this code and live with it, which is perfectly fine. But this is not going to fly uh, in a real time world. Why? Because we have uh, in a real time uh, applications it's not that always a form will map to one database table so in this case if you see employee department uh, let me put a okay our pdm shows that we actually have an address as a common part for a department and an employee so this has a formal model and uh, we actually missed it completely and the model is there for a reason right and also if you uh, this is in other words uh, reflects to your real time database model and in order to in this case if you want to follow this whole thing if you want to save an employee what should happen is uh, first uh, the employee should be created uh, and a record in the employee table should be created and a records in records remember s because the you have a multiple addresses within the same employee so you should have to create a multiple address records in the address table and maintain that link in the employee table. So it's a three transactions in a one single save. In our case, it's not at all doing any of that. And uh, of course, you can actually extend this uh, to do that also. For example, uh, if I, oh sorry, I get the wrong page, general, and go to employee page, in this case, uh, to keep our example simple, I actually added the address as part of the employee table, okay, which is fine. If it is a very small scale application and isolated one, nothing to do with the enterprise level applications, then which is fine. And if it is, uh, like we have to follow this design to keep it a normalized database, um, then it's not going to be possible. In this case, it's pretty simple. It's going to talk to two tables. Ideally, you might see a transaction that might talk to uh, several tables in a real-time transaction. And in that case, 
uh, this model will never work. It's not going to fly um, because everything is hard coded into your code. All these queries are hard coded into your code. They are sitting in your uh, page de uh, definition, and this is not going to fly completely. Okay, so what the uh, real time exp uh, real time applications will demand from you or from the application side is a completely d different thing that we have seen in our design, especially. We have seen the multi-layered one, especially the sequence diagram. So this is a sequence diagram that is going to tell you what all need to be happening. So you're going to have an employee created. Of course, this was a sweet flavor. Uh, in this case, uh, if I want to save an employee, I also need an address uh, uh, business object uh, because it has a containment relationship with the employee and business um, address. So all this uh, is going to be a little more complicated to do, but of course, we have to do. Uh, what I'm going to do in the next session is we're going to do that this uh, model, we're going to follow this model. We will do a lot of coding. Uh, of course, we have to use the enterprise library to do the CRUD operations and uh, we'll see a real time. So in the next session, we will actually uh, be looking more into the code that we have completely ignored here in the code behind uh, here. We just had only one line. So we will be starting filling up uh, this code and we will actually uh, go with the basic intrinsic controls. None of these uh, data controls will be using. We will be going back to our uh, plain vanilla intrinsic controls where we put the uh, labels, buttons and all the thing manually. We will go to massage them uh, manually applying the stylish and other things. Um, so we will pretty much try to do a real time uh, application. My intention here is to uh, keep, uh, because it's going to be very lengthy task, I want to uh, write most of the project uh, offline and make it uh, as part of a demo. And we'll do some part of uh, it uh, in action while doing so that you walk through what are the things we need to do. Okay, so for now, um, uh, I would consider that we are done and as part of the daily activity what you're going to do is we have to make sure that your uh, pending changes is gone. So I will say EOD check-in. So end of day check-in, my work is done. So uh, ideally you're going to give a very detailed informative uh, uh, text. Um, since for demo, it's going to keep it simple. And also, uh, another thing, important thing, is uh, your, let me expand this, your status update. So what I'm going to do is uh, open this uh, work items and my queries and say, okay, I'm sorry, my queries and then say right click and say view results. And what all the tasks I have done? Create a new database. Yes, I have done. Closed. And my hours. Hours remaining zero. Completed. So when I completed, if I take uh, three hours, then that's fine. Three hours. This is the original estimate, so need not be always same. So you're going to put what exactly you have invested. It could be more than four hours or less than four, uh, four hours. So that will actually give you a good picture of uh, how, uh, of course, estimations can uh, cannot be always same. So I'm going to create the employee module done. And two, and uh, okay, I'm, I said I'm going to, done. So I spent say for example uh, two hours for example, okay, which is fine. And also activity closed and there was there is no original estimate so I'll just say completed in one hour. Okay, so I'll save my tasks and leave for the day. Pack up your stuff and go home. So that's why I'm going to uh, uh, do the daily activities at work. Okay, so we'll meet again in the next session and continue with the uh, real-time enterprise kind of applications wherein uh, and we'll see what are the benefits in doing that way and what are the what are the, what are the disadvantages in doing this way. Okay. So in this session we did continue with our HR project and uh, we saw 
uh, how can we use a master page, the content placeholder, and the content uh, within a child pages. And uh, we did walk through the Cascade style sheet. And we did also see the uh, ASPX web form designer split source view uh, within the Visual Studio. And also we did see the SQL Server 2008 Management Studio overview and creating application database in uh, VS 2010 within the IDE itself without going to the Management Studio. And also we did create uh, database tables and constraints uh, for our project. And also we did use the grid view control in ASPX web form uh, and uh, make it editable as, as well uh, to manage the data, all the crude operations uh, using the grid view and also the form view control for editing the item. So we'll continue with the next level of uh, development uh, in the next uh, session. Mm -hmm.